In this video, you will learn about a six-year-old girl who died of a brain hemorrhage, and her mother, Wildoy Lopez, was the killer. It became a national embarrassment in the United States. Inaction on the part of social services led to tragedy, and later the child welfare system in New York underwent a major reorganization. Gustavo Izquierdo, a Cuban immigrant, dreamed of conquering New York and becoming a choreographer, but ended up becoming a cook at a homeless shelter in Fort Greene. It was at this shelter that he met Puerto Rican Avilda Lopes in 1987. He stayed at the orphanage for a while because he did not have a home of his own. It turned out that she and her roommate, Ruben Rivera, had been evicted for non-payment of rent. The couple also have two children in common, siblings Ruben Sino and Casey. Another fact was that Avilda used cocaine. Despite her two-year relationship with Gustavo, she never stopped using cocaine. So when Avilda became pregnant and did not stop using cocaine, Gustavo decided to divorce her and get custody. Thus, after a visit to social services in January 1989, the pregnant Avilda was denied rights to her two sons. When Elisa was born on February 11, 1989, her father, Gustavo, was granted full custody. According to a friend of the man, he took full responsibility for caring for his newborn daughter and was good at changing diapers and preparing formula. Elisa grew up in great love and affection. In 1990, Gustavo enrolled Elisa in a Montessori kindergarten with the help of Prince Michael of Greece and Denmark. Coincidentally, when Gustavo visited the kindergarten, the teachers and principal introduced Elisa to Michael. The girl jumped into the prince's arms and did not leave his side for an entire day. At this time, Gustavo began to experience health problems and could not afford his daughter's education. When Prince Michael found out about it, he offered to help by paying the girl's tuition at Friends of Brooklyn School through grade 12. He also periodically sent gifts to the girl, and she thanked him by sending him letters with drawings. Her joy, however, was short-lived. When little Elisa began to do well in kindergarten, her mother decided to return her to foster care. Social services confirmed that Avilda had fully recovered from her addiction and moved into a permanent home, which was provided through an assistance program. She married a waiter named Carlos Lopes and gave birth to a daughter, Taisha, in December 1990. She regained custody of her two older sons, and in November 1991, she had the opportunity to spend a weekend with Elisa. After several visits to her mother, Elisa's father began to notice bruises on the girl's body. Elisa became incontinent to urinate and defecate. Her caregiver said that after a weekend spent with her mother Elisa could not sleep well, she was nauseated and vomiting. It was later revealed that the Vilda's eldest son told relatives that their mother would vomit profusely once they brought Elisa home. They locked her in a room and left her to starve to death. It is true that no one from the family called for help. She was stabbed hard in the stomach, groin, and head. Her teacher and father immediately went to the authorities. Elisa told social services that her mother and stepfather had abused her. In 1992, Gustavo filed a petition to deprive him of his right to see Avalda and Elisa. The court's decision surprised the father. The mother had the right to see her daughter, but on the condition that she no longer punish the girl. Then Gustavo decided to emigrate to Cuba with his daughter in December 1993, even bought a ticket for May 26, 1994, but unfortunately fate played a cruel joke on him. In May his health deteriorated, he was hospitalized, and to his horror, Gustavo Izquierdo died of lung cancer on May 26. Avilda immediately called her daughter, and Elisa asked, What about Daddy? To this question her mother replied, Daddy died. She answered curtly. Her mother said, Your father is dead. She answered sharply. Upon learning of Gustavo's death, Principal Phyllis Bryce immediately contacted the child's judge to explain that Eliza would be living with her own mother. However, the court decided to grant Avilda full custody of her daughter, her biological mother not anyone else. That was the court's decision. Gustavo's cousin, Elsa Canizares, disagreed with the court's decision, citing Avilda's addiction, 
and decided to take custody. The director and Prince Michael told the court that Elisa had been beaten, that her mother had been rude, and that Avilda had not stopped using cocaine. The prince also said in his letter that he would pay for all of Brooklyn's education in a shelter school if he gave custody of Elisa to his aunt. The aunt, Elsa herself, is not a wealthy person and has no money to hire a lawyer. She was unable to get legal assistance during the trial. Avilda, on the other hand, was represented by an attorney from Family Aid, which is funded by the federal government. Not only did the lawyer succeed in clearing her name by convincing the court that she was no longer using drugs, professionals also shamed Gustavo's sister into talking about how shameful it was to separate a child from her mother. After months of trying to secure Elisa's future, her family and friends learned the hard way. In September 1994, the court granted Elisa full custody of her mother. The first thing Avilda did was to transfer Elise to a public school. Soon the principal noticed that Eliza had become unfriendly, withdrawn, and suffered from frequent urination. The girl also had bruises on her body, walked with difficulty, and some of the hair on her head was wildly cropped. Six days later, Eliza was admitted to the hospital with a fractured shoulder, and the wound did not heal for three days. School 126 officials contacted the Manhattan Department of Child Welfare. The response to their complaint was that there was no direct evidence of child abuse. All of these bruises and fractures were normal for children that age. Nevertheless, the Child Welfare Department followed up with Avilda, but she denied that she had abused her daughter. In December 1994, she decided to remove Eliza from school so that her personal life would not be spied on. After leaving school, Eliza was locked in her room not allowed to communicate with her brothers and sisters, not allowed to leave her room, much less go outside. She was not allowed to go to the bathroom, and there was a container in her bedroom to go to the bathroom. Neighbors heard the woman beating the girl. Elisa said to Avilda, Mommy, Mommy, stop it. I heard her begging. I won't do it again. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Of course, some neighbors complained about Avilda's behavior, but no action was taken. Most of the neighbors simply wished the noise would stop. In fact, it was her own mother who did the most horrible thing to her own daughter. Avilda kicked Elisa in front of the other children and fed her her own excrement. She held her feet and scrubbed the floor of the house with her head. She made her older children torture Elisa as well. They raked her with combs and toothbrushes. While the other children ate at the table, Eliza would sit on the floor and watch them. Her mother was convinced that demons had possessed the girl. On November 15, Carlos Lopes was imprisoned for a parole violation. Seven days later, on the evening of November 22, Avilda called one of her sisters, Mercy Torres, to report that Eliza was bedridden with a condition of mental retardation and had strange discharge from her nose and mouth. It was later determined to be cerebrospinal fluid. The nurse advised Avilda to take her daughter to the hospital, but Avilda replied that she would think about it. The next day, Avilda called a neighbor to look at Elisa's motionless body. When the neighbor found that the girl showed no signs of life, she advised her to call the police. But Avilda became hysterical and said she would kill herself if they did. The neighbor called an ambulance, and she herself called the police. Eventually, the grief-stricken mother was arrested. When questioned, Avilda said she hadn't done anything wrong, but had simply banged Elisa's head against a concrete wall. After that, her daughter suddenly stopped walking and talking. The forensic examination showed that Eliza had broken fingers and toes. The bone of one of her fingers was protruding through the skin. There were numerous injuries on her body, deep cuts, deep wounds and burns on her head, face and body. There were also lacerations and other marks on her genitals and anus. The forensic examination showed that all the injuries had been inflicted over a long period of time. Elisa died on November 22, 1995. On June 25, 1996, Avilda Lopes pleaded guilty to the second-degree murder of her daughter in New York State Supreme Court. Judge Alvin Schlesinger added to the sentence Carlos Lopes had already served. On October 29, 1996,
Elisa's stepfather received a three-year prison sentence. That sentence related only to the episode of his daughter's beating. The man explained that he was only pretending to beat Elis so that Avilda would leave Elise alone and not stress the children. Of course, no one believed him. Avilda Lopes was sentenced to 15 life sentences. 